Hello, I'm Felipe Mello, and today I'm going to present analysis of unsupervised and supervised phase classification with petrophysics knowledge in a field from Gulf of Mexico. I did this work with my colleague Veronica Perez, and we are from Geo Software. This is the agenda for the presentation, a brief introduction, the data set, phases classification, then the work is divided. The results of one part are not used to the other part. We perform unsupervised phase classification and supervised phase classification. Finally, the conclusions. Now, a brief introduction. A few words about phase classification. Why do it? Because phases are key for oil and gas exploration. They are used in many aspects of exploration and production. How is phase classification performed? Usually, it's performed with petrophysics and rock physics. However, in recent years, machine learning has also been used to perform phase classification. Finally, what's this work for? We are here to analyze machine learning techniques for unsupervised and supervised phase classification. In fact, the idea of this work came out of the, after a meeting with a colleague. He was using machine learning for unsupervised phase classification, and he could not achieve better results than a petrophysicist. So, I thought this could interest others. Now, I will explain a bit of the dataset. The dataset is located in Mississippi Canyon Block 109 from Gulf of Mexico, over the west flank of a faulted anticline. The face of the reservoir spans from sandy to shale, as we can see in the sketch and later. Reservoirs are trapped in two sequences, upper and lower delta. Here we can see a seismic section with the faults in magenta and the main horizons. The upper delta is divided in delimited by the orange horizon of thin sands with low sand shale radius and boundaries are not clear. In red, thin sands with low density grain flows. In green, overlapping sequence of cliniforms with continuous reservoirs where sands overlap, both structural and stratigraph stratigraphic components with partially controlled faults. The dataset is composed by seven wells, shown in the map on the left-hand side. Some of them are not vertical, as you can see by the well paths in red. In the right-hand side, we can see the wells plotted against the seismic and the horizons. Green horizon defines the main reservoir in this work. Here are the input well logs from well 6. We have resistivity, p-velocity, s-velocity, v-clay and water saturation. Note the answers of the logs in the zone of interest. For example, right resistivity, low v-clay, and low water saturation. Here we have the cross-plot of the petrophysical parameters, resistivity, water saturation, and v-clay, using data from all wells. We are going to use water saturation and v-clay to define the faces. Here we can see the same well logs. Above, there are the rules used to define the faces based on v-clay and water saturation. We define three faces, shale, sand, and pay sand. Now let's look at the face log. We have a good definition of the faces and the reservoir is well defined. From now on, I'll refer to this log as true faces log. Here we have the previous cross plot with information from all wells, but now it's colored by faces and show a good definition in the petrophysical domain. For example, the pace sand is clearly defined. Here, we are going to see the elastic domain. But before, noticing the well view drops in p-velocity in the region of pace sand. Now we have the cross plot showing p-velocity against s-velocity. And we can also see a good definition of the faces. Base sand is also clearly defined in this domain, so the rule applied for phase classification makes sense. Here we have the phase distribution per well. The name of the well is above. Some wells do not have base sand, like well 2, and some of them have small values. 
In the right bottom corner, we have the phase distribution in all wells. The amount of shale in the zone of interest is huge, while pay sand is small. The Pearson correlation plot shows that the data has no linearity, which is good for machine learning, except by VP and VS. Now let's go to the phase classification, the unsupervised and supervised. Again, the unsupervised and supervised phase classification results are independent. One is not an input to the other. Here we are going to have two approaches for each technique of phase classification. In the first approach, we are going to use V-clay and water saturation, the same logs used for the definition of the phases. In the second approach, we are going to use all well logs available. So, at the end, we will have two results for unsupervised and two for supervised phase classification. Now, let's start with the unsupervised phase classification. I'm going to talk about the method. For the unsupervised phase classification, the true phases log is used only to check the results. It's not part of the process. To perform the classification, we use the balanced iterative reducing and clustering using hierarchies, also known as BIRCH. It's a clustering feature tree, a tree where each leaf node contains a subcluster. And I'll tell you, I selected this clustering technique after tests with other clustering techniques available in Python and achieved the best, uh, the best results. To measure the success of the technique, we will do qualitative and quantitative analysis. The qualitative analysis consists in check the classified and true logs. For quantitative analysis, we will use the RAND index. It measures the similarity between two clusters by considering all pairs of samples. It ranges from 0 to 1, where 1 is a perfect match. Now the results of the classification. Here we can see the unsupervised phase classification using the logs VClay and water saturation as input. We show the true phases of well 1 and the unsupervised classification for this well. Most of the sand and paste sand phases were correctly classified. Now you can see the results for the other wells. I will show in the true phase log and the classified phase logs the results for each well is limited by the vertical dashed bar. In well 2, there are no paste sands. Well 3 has two layers of paste sand correctly defined. Well 4 has two layers of paste sand that were also correctly classified. Well 5 had the paste sand correctly classified. Well 6 has two layers of paste sand that were correctly classified. The upper one below green top is perfect. It's the region of interest. Well, S21 has no pay sand and was not misclassified. Regarding the sands in orange, they were misclassified in some points for all else. The RAND index for this case is 0.82, which is good, as you can visually check. Here we can see the unsupervised phase classification using the logs resistivity, p-velocity, s-velocity, v-clay, and water saturation as input. We also show the true phases and the unsupervised phase side by side. The results for each well are limited by dashed vertical line. Notes that few thin layers of paste sand are classified in wells 1, 3, 4, and 6. Most of the sand are also misclassified. This is, a, this is exactly what happened with my colleague. He added all our logs available and achieved the res results that were not what he was expecting. Because this kind of algorithm groups similar attributes without the need of, for prior information. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. <coughs> and we, that's why we need to check the petrophysics, which in this case is our data. The RAN index for this case is 0.77. It's a high value, but most of phases are shale. So that's the reason for this high value. And that's why it's important to have uh, more than one way to make your QC. 
Now let's go to the supervised phase classification. Here let's talk about the method. To perform the supervised phase classification, we divided the data set between training and test data. The OS in blue will be used for training and the wells 2, 3 and S21 are the test wells, in black in both figures. So these wells will not be exposed to the model along training. We use the gradient boosting to perform the phase classification. It's a classification model in the form of an ensemble of weak classification models. We perform model selection and hyperparameter tuning with the nested cross-validation. This is a powerful procedure for small datasets in order to avoid overfitting. Here we have the training dataset already defined with four wells. Then it's divided in training and test folds. We have an outer loop that divides the data in test and training fold and an inner loop where the data is divided in training and validation folds. This process is repeated for each well. To measure the success of the technique, we will do qualitative and quantitative analysis. The qualitative analysis consists in check the classified and true logs. For quantitative analysis, we will use the confusion matrix and the accuracy score. The confusion matrix evaluates the classification with each row corresponding to the true class and the accuracy score measures how close a given set of measurements are to the true value, the true faces. Now the results. Here we have the confusion matrices for well 2, well 3 and well ST1. The true faces are the roles in the vertical axis and the predicted faces are in the columns in the horizon axis. Well 2 has no pace sand and it was not misclassified. Well 3 has almost all pace sand classified correctly and well S21 has only three samples of pace sand and one was misclassified. Now let's look at the confusion matrices of the supervised classification, classification using all logs. The results are like the ones using two logs as inputs. We have small variations but overall, the results are the same with no pay send misclassified in well 2 and most of the face correctly classified in wells 3 and S21. Here we have the results for well 2. The true log, the supervised classification with two logs as inputs, and the supervised classification with all logs as input. Both results are like the true log. And here we have the results for wells 3 and S21. As expected by the confusion matrix, all results are like the true logs. The cures for all wells are basically the same, about 98%. Now let's conclude. For the unsupervised phase classification, prior knowledge of well logs provided good results, defined the main faces and the reservoir. Using more logs resulted in worse results. Faces of interest were misclassified. This kind of algorithm groups similar attributes without the need for prior information. Reasonable, reasonable geophysical results may not be achieved. That's why you need to check the petrophysics, which in this case is our data. For the supervised phase classification, with and without prior petrophysical knowledge, Provided, provided similar results with high accuracy score. This kind of algorithm learns from more nonlinear data, so adding more input logs aid in a better model. The fact that only three faces are presented in the data was an additional positive point to the algorithm. In general, face classification with machine learning is fast and valuable process that should be explored taking into account the domain subject, in your case, the well logs. We cannot just run an algorithm and expect good results without understanding what it's supposed to do. We would like to thank GeoSoftware and the developers of JSON for the support, Talos Energy for permission to show this data. Thank you for uh, your audience and here are our contacts. Thank you.